Yo, what's up guys? Jodeo today, man. I'll be talking about five NBA rookies that I cannot wait to watch in the 2023 NBA season. As you know, last year, a lot of rookies came on the scene. It was honestly one of the best rookie classes that we've seen in recent memory. We saw Jalen Green have a horrid first half, respectfully, the second half. He was literally nothing short of amazing and then making all rookie first team, albeit over Josh Kidd, you'll miss a good chunk of the second half, but still Green did his thing in the second half of the season. Even with a really, really, really slow first half, players can still end up having a really good rookie season, even without having, let's say, the consistency early on. Just getting used to the NBA and this and that, getting used to going from college or the G League to the NBA. It's a huge jump. It's a huge leap. Some players come out the gates on fire. Some players like Jalen Green come out very, very slow, and they end off scorching out okay. But yet today, I have five players. It's a mixture of um, lottery picks and some other players down the pretty much the first round that I just watched a little bit in the summer league and I just can't wait to watch them in the NBA okay but other than that let's get straight to the okay so coming in at number five I have Shaden Sharp of the Blazers Shaden Sharp is a guy that I have never seen once play game of basketball he played a couple minutes in the G League but of course I wasn't watching that game and he ended up getting injured and he ended up missing the remainder of summer league so I literally didn't get to watch anything on Shaden Sharp at all I haven't even watched me I've Watch minimal Shaden Sharp highlights probably when he got drafted. I saw a couple clips of him in high school. Again, I did not watch his summer league game, so I don't even know how he looked in that game. Um, as soon as I was about to turn the game on, I saw he was injured, and then I was just watching uh, Keon Johnson and Brandon Williams and Trenton Wofford. Shout out to the Blazers, by the way, winning the summer league championship, getting the ring. Shout out to them. Uh, yeah, Shaden Sharp is a guy I'm really excited to watch because, again, I have not watched a single minute of his game at all. I literally know nothing about his game. But I know that he's a decent frame, and I've heard that he's a pretty good shot creator. Other than that, I don't know anything about him. I want to see what role he carves out on the Blazers now after, obviously, they went ahead and acquired Jeremy Grant. They ended up re-signing Anthony Simons, getting paid an absolute bag. It's an absolute W in my book. I would say Damian Lillard and... They obviously also did resign user Nurkic. Uh, they also did resign Dame for what two years, hundred million dollars, something like that. It's a large two-year deal, so they resigned pretty much their whole entire starting five. So I want to see what role Sharp can kind of carve out in the NBA. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't expect Sharp to come out scorching guy. I expect him to take a decent amount of time to get used to the NBA because again, he played no college basketball. Last time he played professional basketball was literally in the summer league for what six minutes and then he got injured and apparently was such a uh tough injury maybe they're just being uh, precautionary that he didn't play the remainder of the summer league so can't wait to see what he brings to the game uh obviously he's the mystery man he did not play a single game in college for kentucky because he got an injury and i literally know close to nothing about him i know that he's a five-star crew he's supposed to be one of the best players in the draft and still he was a top lottery pick even without playing any college game so obviously the talent is there is want to see if he can bring that to the nba can't wait to watch him on that pleasure team that should be pretty fun to watch this year honestly coming in at number four i have another lottery pick i have chet holmgren of the okc thunder now the reason why i want to watch chet holmgren is i want to see i know the big talk about chet holmgren is his weight and how he has um this frame that isn't really the best for the nba We've seen players like, like Giannis come to the league very, very, um, I don't want to say weak, but they don't have, like, they're not built to play, let's say, a power forward center position. Chet Holmgren will be playing center this year. People have to have a tough matchup on them a lot of times going up against guys like Nikola Jokic, guys like Joel Embiid, guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis, obviously, as we know, a lot of his game is getting to the rim, getting to the free throw line, and where is Chet going to be? all in the paint and i can't wait to see if that goes along because man the way chet is right now in terms of his frame it looks like he's gonna get absolute body i've talked about this um when i was talking about chet last time i'm out i was watching um the march madness and i saw jalen duran now obviously of the pistons by way of the nba draft uh, when he was at Memphis, he went ahead and absolutely body Chet Holmgren. It was a viral clip. And again, we saw another viral clip where we saw Kenny Lofton Jr. Um, obviously on the Grizzly Summer League team. He absolutely bodied him. He had an, an absolute blunder. But I'm not going to lie. Chet Holmgren did have a couple blocks. And he looks pretty decent in the paint. It's just when he has a guy that obviously outweighs him in the paint, it's very difficult for him to guard him. But at some points, he gets bodied. And at points, he gets blocks. He has a really good frame. Though. He's very, very rest out. Can shoot. Can pass and really really quick he has a really good shot 
what's really impressed me is just, just pull up three point shot has been amazing and yeah i just want him to continue to work on getting some weight on it because i'm telling you when Embiid and Giannis see him that man's gonna turn into flash and man that man's gonna turn into flash and so please check home great i know you're a couple months away from making your nba debut officially but please my man put some weight on you i just can't wait to watch um chet holmgren and josh giddy and sga and jre the jalen williams is um even poke if he gets some good rotational minutes this year obviously they end up resigning lou dort so should be a pretty fun team they obviously did also draft uzman jang they literally had three first round picks uh finally Josh Giddy and SGA have an actual big man that they can actually consistently throw live soon has shape potential that's not Derek Favors respectfully who I don't even think is even in the NBA right now I'm pretty sure I would hope they didn't go ahead and resign him so yeah all right coming in at number three I have Tari Eason of the Houston Rockets Tari Eason was one of the guys that I can't remember any single time I watched him at LSU so again the guy that had to go ahead and watch and summer like to see what his game is about and i was thoroughly impressed he was one of the most dominant players in the summer league and he probably was the best player for the houston rockets in the summer league i mean you could give it to him or josh christopher and then Tari smith was good but he wasn't as good as christopher or as tarvi tarvi is the guy that really has a tall frame and he was like one of the best rebounders in summer league and i really love his shot creation i really like his shot he was looking very, very good. He has a good defensive frame as well. So I can't wait to see, again, what role he carves out in the NBA. Um, he's a guy that potentially in the future can be this. Think about Tari Eason, though. I'm pretty sure he can play the small forward and power forward. Because obviously, the power forward this year probably will be Jabari Smith. And the center probably this year would be, off the top of my head, it would be Alperen Shangoon. So Tari should probably be off the bench this year. Um, I don't know. It's be pretty interesting to see. Maybe they start. I don't know. Because Tari and Jabari pretty much are the same exact height, if I'm not mistaken. So I want to see how they want to do that. Tari Eason is six foot eight. And Jabari Smith, if I'm not mistaken as well, is also six foot eight. So again, um, head coach Steven Tallis. I want to see what you do with that. Actually, no. Jabari Smith is six foot ten. My God, he's six foot ten moving like that. Jeez. Yeah, that man's gonna be nice, okay? So him at the four potentially Tyrese at the three i'm not sure okay i'm not i really just thinking out loud about the rocket starting lineup obviously get the one they'll have kpj who was uh going through ongoing talks you know in terms of a contract extension that may or may not come Jalen green obviously they got last or second overall from the mph draft at the three jay sean tate at the four jabari smith and at the five i'll prevent shangu they went ahead and obviously um Traded away Christian Wood for a future first round pick from the Dallas Mavericks. So I think they have confidence in Shangoon, who did show flashes of being a really good center, extremely flashy. And obviously, we know when it comes to the free throw line, he was known for kissing the basketball, which was pretty interesting. But damn good player, man. Damn good player. But yeah, can't wait to watch Arvison and see him develop. The Rockets will be one of the teams that I've watched the most next year. A team that I actually watched a decent amount last year as well with Jalen Green and KPJ. Now you add on Tyree Eason, and now you add on Jabari Smith. Yeah, I'm going to be watching a lot of Rockets games this year, especially because, like I said, of Jabari Smith and also Tyree Eason. All right, coming in at number two, I have Paolo Banquero of the Orlando Magic. Paolo is a guy that I have watched most of every prospect because Duke is obviously one of the greatest college basketball franchises of all time so their games are always on espn and whenever i get time to go ahead and watch a college basketball game more than likely it will be uh, either like a espn or espn2 game whenever let's say a duke versus unc game is on i'll go ahead and tune in i watch the um final regular season game that coach k played against unc i watched him in march madness i've watched paulo Benquiro, i think a game this year against syracuse i think it was betting on that game and i bet on duke like what minus seven and a half or something like that and they um secured so yeah this is a team that i've watched this is a team that i know a decent amount about um yeah paulo Benquiro, i can't wait to watch him uh the magic are an interesting team they went out last year and got Jalen Suggs. They have Franz Wagner. They re Bob Bump, which I don't know why to be their backup center now to Wendell Carter Jr. Um, 
they still have Jonathan Isaac, who I don't even know who's going to play next year. Obviously, you know, off the court, he's, like, very political, and then he was out last year. So I don't know what's going on in Jonathan Isaac's life, but he's a very controversial person, but he's a really good defender, and I just want to know what's going on in terms of him because they have a lot of forwards on the team. They have a lot of guards as well, Markel Fultz with RJ Hampton, with Jalen Suggs, but Cole Anthony, like, the list goes on. They we signed Gary Harris as well. Like, it's just so much going on down there in Orlando that I want to see what Paolo Bencura does because I remember watching the summer league. He was always the most dominant player on the court. I remember watching his first game against Houston. I guess Jabari Smith, he was outperforming him. I remember his first shot he took. I think he hit a corner three in the right side of the court. Switched that, playing really good defense. Underrated part about his game from summer league that I saw it's playmaking again i'm not taking summer league too serious because it is summer league and you can't really take it serious at all you can't overwrite can't overreact you can't really go so far about summer league because again it just really doesn't count his summer league just is showing off um the young players in the league trying to either make contracts or trying to bolster um confidence in terms of their teams and stuff like that so yeah Paul mccare is a guy i watched a lot i want to see him continue to work on his shot i want to see him just be that freight train in the paint i want to see him work on his bag i want to see him just get acclimated to the nba i can't wait to see his first game and see how he performs because again some players come out scorching got some players take a little time to develop in the nba i want to see what paulo bankero is this is a guy that like i said i've watched the most and i'll probably have as my, as my number one overall prospect but obviously it ended up happening so there's that but yeah Pelican, I came in to watch him in the NBA came in to see how he comes out and really want to see how the magic kind of use him because they have a lot of forwards they have a lot of guards I want to see if Cole Anthony still thinks he's the number one option on the team want to see a uh, second year Franz Wagner like this is such an interesting team that I just can't wait to see what happens in terms of that I can't wait to see Paulo Bancaro develop in the NBA all right coming in at number one I have Jaden Ivey from the Detroit pitch Jaden Ivey is the guy that I watched him uh game in March Madness and he did not look good whatsoever I remember that one game that Purdue lost I remember um I bet on him and my man sold me so it's the only memory I have of Jaden Ivey in terms of March Madness looking like absolute just awful and then I saw him in summer league again don't think summer league too serious but he was looking very very good really good playmaker really good shot creator really good around the rim extremely crafty if you guys didn't know his mother actually was the former assistant head coach for the Memphis Grizzlies and obviously he was uh quote-unquote took under um John Morant's wing obviously there's some letters between him and John Morant to um creativity and craftiness and being really good ball player, their ability to attack the rim, have streaky jump shots, and a lot of some letters between him and uh John Moran. I'm pretty sure John Moran is way more athletic from what I've seen out of Ivy. I haven't seen too many clips of him getting up there. But again, not really too big of a college guy, so I'll take that with a grain of salt, obviously. But pretty sure he at least has decent hops, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. He went to watch him and Kate in the same backcourt. Um also Sadiq Bey as well, Isaiah Stewart, Jalen Durant, can't wait to see those lives between him and Beef Stew and him and Jalen Durant. Still another interesting team to watch, probably another front team to watch. Watching him and KJ the backcourt. Again, I came out to watch how he develops into the NBA. I came out to see just what he had in store for the league because he probably would be, in my opinion, the most entertaining player. I'm not going to say he's gonna be the best player in terms of entertainment from what I'm seeing in summer league if i'm seeing the one game at purdue a lot of john moran flash i'm not gonna say he's the next john moran i'm not out here to make these outlandish predictions on that i'm just saying the similarities between their games because obviously he's watched john moran day in and day out at memphis for the grizzlies and pretty soon i was close to john moran so they have a, a special bond and all that but he looks like a super entertaining player, and I can't wait to see how he comes out with Cade Cunningham, with Sadiq Bay, and Beef Stew with Jalen Duran. Like I said, man, this seems to be fun to watch as well. Pistons fans, y'all got your guy right here, Jaden Ivey. Man, y'all got your guy right here in Jaden Ivey. Yeah, yo, my opinion, that is the five NBA rookies that I cannot wait to watch for the 2022-2023 NBA season. Comment down below, in your opinion, who do you guys think will be pretty entertaining to watch? I kind of just went through it top of my head try to find any entertaining players that i think and a couple of players as well that i thoroughly watched the summer league i watched a good amount of summer league as well and summer league is actually pretty great in my opinion 
again you don't really have to overreact to but just seeing these young players get used to a little bit of a taste of nba caliber players and see how they go ahead and bob and weave their way through the competition even if it is not really nba uh not against me if it's not like all the NBA players on the court. These are guys that are going to be overseas, guys that are going to be in the G League, and guys are probably, some of them will even be starting in the NBA. So, again, it's decent competition, okay? But definitely don't take that too serious at all. If your favorite rookie, if, if your favorite team's player is struggling, it's Summer League, okay? But again, it's cool, though, if he's dominating in Summer League because at least he has something to root for, okay? But other than that, yo, that is the finish. Go down below, drop a like, comment down below. It's about me on Twitch, Twitter, and to talk to you, boy John. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm out, man. Peace.